Welcome back to the channel, guys. I appreciate you tuning back in. I am Kyle with Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair. Today, what we got going on, we have a 2005 Suzuki King Quad 700. Uh, he's having a charging issue. He took it to another shop and they said they fixed it, got it back, took it for a ride, still spitting and sputtering, and then the battery ends up dead. Um, I'm going to point my finger out on this thing being a 2005 is going to probably be the stator. I'll walk you through on how to test the stator statically. We'll check it to ground. We'll check it on its interior ground, make sure it's not grounded out. And we'll also check the AC voltage output. But as always, we always start at the battery to make sure it has at least 12 volts or close to it. That way we know it's not coming from the battery itself to start off with, which is underneath the seat on this model. So guys, if you want, please like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. It really helps my channel out a lot. And we're gonna jump right into this thing right now and get you guys a little educated on how to check your stator in the charging system on this King Quad. All right, guys, really simple to get the seat off here. Uh, he does have this uh, bag on the back from Tusk, but basically just lift this up. There's a tab on the back, pull it, lift up, slide back, up and forward because of this piece in the way. Right here's the battery. What we're gonna do, we're gonna check the terminals, make sure they're tight. Terminals are tight. We're gonna grab our multimeter. Gonna set it on volts DC. Put it right here for you guys. Hopefully you can get a good view of that. And we're gonna check the battery voltage as always on anything we ever start on. And we got 12.6, so that's awesome. 12.6 volts, uh, perfect on the battery for his setting here. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fire it up. We're gonna check to see if we get any charging voltage up here at the battery at all. So let's go ahead and fire it up real quick. I know it does start and run. All right, guys, as you see, we got 12.2 volts. I'm gonna rev it up a little bit and see if we get any more charging voltage. 12.6 and nothing. But we're gonna start off by checking the stator down here on the left side. The connections are right underneath this plastic right here. All right, guys, over here on the left-hand side, if you look in here, you can see where the wires for the stator come out of the side case cover. Your uh, crank sensor, is also on this side and it runs up to a little plug right up here and then you also have the here's your connection right here you got four yellow wires on this model some are white some of them have yellow with a red tracer uh, kind of varies from model to model brand to brand and then it also connects and runs down here to your rectifier as you can see right here and there's some relays so right here's your plugs Really simple to get, sorry about the horrible view and the moving, but right there. So we're gonna unplug this guy right here and we'll check statically between these three for any type of uh, open circuit. It should have resistance in all three of these. If there's an open circuit, it means one of the legs have burnt out on itself. But then we'll also check it from each individual one to the ground on the battery to make sure it's not grounded out on the inside and then we'll start it up and check AC voltage output uh, between this and ground and to see if we have the proper AC voltage output. All right guys, so I pulled off the reusable zip tie. These things are really nice to have around. Uh, they hold the wiring harness up to everything and reusable, you can pull this little tab up, take it apart, put it back together. So right here is the plug we want. Sometimes these are a really big headache to get apart, sometimes they're really easy. None of the plug stuff looks burned up. Everything looks pretty good. So remember, you wanna check the wire running to the stator, not the wire going to the rectifier. So this is the one we'll check. We'll put it on ohms and we'll check between all three points. So let's put our multimeter on ohms. We'll set it right down here. You guys can see that. And we'll just go between all three points. Stick that one in there. And we'll check right here, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 ohms. Next one, 0 0.4 ohms. So that's great. Now we're gonna go from each one of these up to the ground to make sure we're not grounded out anywhere. That would be the negative battery post. We're good there. We're good there. 
and it looks like we're good there. So we have nothing grounded out. We have uh, continuity between all three poles. So uh, I may have been wrong. It may be the rectifier that has gone out of this thing. But now we wanna make sure we check AC voltage. So for that, we have to start it up and check between the points. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna test between all three legs here for AC voltage. We'll turn our multimeter to AC. And then we need to start the unit out and then we will test across all three legs again. So I'm just going to go ahead and start here. We'll test it at idle and we will test it revving up. Hopefully she fires right up this time. Jumping around a little bit between 34, 32. 32, 31, pretty, pretty darn close there. Check one more time over here. All right, there we go. Let's rev it up a little. Rev this one up, that was 42. 58, go back and check again. All right guys, so it looks like our stator has checked out. Um, most of the time I find these things that had a bad state of that old, but uh, it's going to be the rectifier in this one because it's not picking anything up from the stator at all, which is pretty rare. Usually I get a little bit uh, that lets me know the stator's bad, but I got nothing through there. So we're going to go ahead and order this man a rectifier, slap it on here, and uh, that should cure his problem uh, for charging. Uh, he said he had a runability problem, and like I said in the past, guys, these things are really dependent on 12 volts for the fuel injection to work properly on these. If the fuel injection doesn't have 12 volts and it starts getting low, the dwell time starts getting crazy, um, doesn't have the proper fuel pressure anymore, there's a bunch of things that can go wrong if you don't have the proper uh, voltage running through the electrical system on these for a, a fuel injected system. So there is a way to test uh, rectifiers also. Uh, you do a forward bias and reverse bias on these things. Uh, I guess I'll walk you guys through those steps here real quick too while we're on video. and. Uh, show you guys how to test that also. But I just found out the little plug in here, guys. Let me go ahead and take you off and zoom you in on this one. The little tab on the terminal inside there, if you can see that. We'll try to get it to focus here for you. It might be hard to see, but the, that tab over there is almost broke off. It's gotten water in it multiple times. It's getting rusty and it is breaking off. Like I said, I'm sorry if you guys can't see it. It's about the best I can do with what I have. We'll order up a rectifier for him and we'll throw it on here and we'll check the charging voltage at the battery and see if that cures his problem since we found out that the stator is good at all three ways of testing that and the rectifier has bad pins. All right guys, so we go ahead and got our part in. We replaced the rectifier over here. Uh, I left a link, I shouldn't say a link, I left a picture of how to uh, do a forward bias, reverse bias on the diodes and the rectifier to make sure they're bad. It's directly from the service manual. So if you guys want to pause the video and just check that out or take a still image of it, run it through there. It's a little easier to kind of look at it and read how it's done than actually sit here and tell you to go from the black and white wire to this black wire uh, and so on and so forth and do it in reverse so you see what the ohms are or you don't have any ohms. So I just posted a picture from the service manual uh, along with, in the middle of this video here with you guys. So. Like I said, we replaced it. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna turn on multimeter on volts DC. So we'll set it, I'll put it right here for now. And then what we'll do, we'll run, we'll check to see if we're getting good charging voltage. So we'll go ahead and start up the unit. Right there, 14.56. So that was one of his issues. Uh, at the last place it took it, he wasn't getting uh, proper charging voltage. Uh, they said they had fixed it. I can see they didn't because he wasn't getting anything charging at all. Now he's got proper charging voltage at idle at 14.5, 14.6. Um, so now he still has a runnability issue. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna run you guys through how to take the Diag plug here and you can just jump it, jump it with a, a little wire from the black and white to the uh, white with red tracer. And that way you can get the code, any code you have up here to give you the DTCs. And then you can also see where your um, throttle position line is on the code parameter itself. 
Uh, we're going to check a few of those things because it does have a runnability problem. Uh, I did change the spark plug when it first came in. It didn't cure his problem at all. Um, the spark plug really didn't look bad, but I figured I'm already there. Let's go ahead and replace it. So now I'm going to take a look at like the throttle position, the uh, idle air, idle speed control motor, and uh, maybe the um, engine coolant temperature sensor. They called it what the ETC on this one, and then you have the ISC, the TP, um, intake air temperature, the IET. Um, there's a couple other ones. I can't remember all the initials for it right now, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, a few of those. Like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to jump across this, check out what's going on up here, see if this thing has any codes in it. I didn't see a FI code showing up here at all, blinking, so it probably doesn't have any codes, but this way we can check the TPS. He says somebody else has been here in the past and has done some work to it, so I want to check anything that has to do with that. So we'll jump right into that. All right, guys, you can see I just took a paper clip and we jumped it across the uh, white with red tracer and black with white tracer right here. Now we'll turn the key on. And this is incorrect, guys. You can see that already. Uh, it doesn't have any codes, but right here, that line, that is your TPS. That should be in the center of that C, not on the bottom, not up on the top half. As you can see, you give it gas, it goes to the top, and you let off. It's slow, well, it doesn't really slowly, but it goes back down and now it's at the bottom. It should stop in the center. So what we have to do to adjust that, we'll come down here to the side of the throttle body, and then what we'll do, we'll loosen these two screws on the side of this TPS, and we'll slowly move it until that line ends up in the center. So we'll leave the key on, and we'll adjust that. Uh, it's gonna be hard for me to do with the camera on, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it off camera, and then show you uh, what it looks like when it's correct. All right, guys, it didn't take me very long. As you can see now, it is, oh, that's a horrible glare. It is in the center. Let me turn this light off here. You can see it's in the center now. Give it gas, should go all the way up to the top. There we go, that's better. Should go all the way to the top, let off. Takes a second, drop back down to the middle. All I did on this, guys, I have a really long snap-on screwdriver, this big guy right here. I just run it right underneath this wiring harness right here right to that screw up top right there. It's kind of hard to see. Let me try to get a light in there with that screw there. And then you run through this little slot right here to the bottom screw down there. It's kind of hard to see again with the angle. And you barely move that until you get the adjustment just right. As you can see, it's settled. So now I have to do is put it back together, take it for a ride, and see if it cured the runnability problem. All right, guys, I just got back from a test ride on that quad, that uh, 05 Suzuki King Quad 700, and it has zero hesitation now, zero. Um, I guess somebody got in there and played with the TPS a little bit, got it off. It was reading 26%, I think is what I was reading, uh, at, at an idle, which is completely wrong. As soon as you give that thing a little bit of gas, it was spitting and sputtering, popping, until you really got into it to where the TPS readings could catch up with the motor and the EFI and all that good stuff. So now with the set properly, it has a great idle, uh, amazing throttle response. You can barely touch the gas and start to move and it goes flawlessly. There's no issues at all. Uh, so if you guys don't know how to set the TPS or anything like that, don't get in there and start taking apart your uh, throttle bodies and stuff like that because the ISC motors, the TPS, all that stuff has parameters that has to be set in. Um, like I said, it was taken to another shop and had been brought to me because it still had the same issues. We found out that the rectifier was bad and they said they fixed that by replacing the battery. Um, and it still had the runnability issue. They said they fixed that when they replaced the spark plug. So I figured, well, I just checked the spark plug. I checked the air cleaner. I checked all that stuff and uh, checked the codes. And of course it had no codes. Well, we saw that it needed a rectifier. We checked the stator. We saw that it was all good in all the parameters. Um, we didn't run through how to check the rectifier forward and reverse bias. I said I posted a picture in the middle of this video for you guys with out of the service manual. So you can check that out for yourselves. And then uh, I did change the spark plug because I had taken it out just to look at it. I figured why not just change it anyways while I'm there. And uh, it ended up being the TPS on this thing was a runnability issue. Uh, air cleaner was clean, intake of the throttle body, all that was clean. Uh, so a few things I didn't run through on film. Um, just kind of keep the video a little bit shorter. But uh, again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment. Uh, and I appreciate it. Once again, I'm Kyle with Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.